We are really in unprecedented times and there's obviously going to be a lot of big shifts and they're probably going to happen in the next one to two years. You see every day how the world is falling apart. There's like this particular group, it's a public-private partnership. It's housed within the World Economic Forum, the WEF, but the main, I guess, groups that compose this partnership are uh, the FBI and the DOJ and the Secret Service, Israel's uh, secure, one of their security agencies and the UK National Crime Agency, and then a bunch of banks, right? And then a few tech companies here and there. I think uh, Palantir, PayPal, Microsoft. I mean, some of these big guys are there. And basically, they're led by a former uh, Israeli spy named Tal Goldstein that used to uh, develop a lot of really crazy policies for Netanyahu. And uh, Jeremy Jurgens, who I guess is number two at the WEF after Klaus Schwab at the big WEF meeting earlier this year, was like, yep, big giant cyber attack before 2025. And, you know, the part of the WEF, WEF PAC, the Partnership Against Cybercrime, that's the DOJ and, and all of these guys, uh, say that it's going to be a cyber attack on the banks. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that convenient that, like, the banks can just be like, oh, well, we've collapsed, but it wasn't our fault. It was the fault of these nasty hackers. And I'm sure the hackers will be Hamas and Iran. Uh, they can blame anyone. Today we have Whitney Webb, discussing what's coming in the weeks ahead and why we're about to witness an unthinkable crash very soon. The plan to utilize global markets to implement the coming crisis will be on a level we haven't seen. Whitney shows why the major players are using money and influence to overtake entire countries. She says we're witnessing the collapse of the fiat money system and why this is unlike anything we've seen in history. While the dollar may be the last one to fall, there's something much bigger going on behind the scenes. Let's get right into the video with Whitney Webb as she gives her prediction for what's coming in the days and weeks ahead. Anyone can do it. Anyone can blame anyone. As we know from uh, Vault 7 and WikiLeaks, right? The CIA has the ability to frame literally any government it wants or any group it wants for a cyber attack. And the CIA lost control of those tools, hence uh, WikiLeaks obtaining them and publishing them. So it's very difficult to attribute. And even if you look at um, headlines about cyber attacks that have happened over the past several years, it's usually a cybersecurity company that if you look on its website was created by NQTEL, the CIA, or it was created by Israel's Unit 8200, which is Israel's like NSA equivalent. And they're saying stuff like, high probability that it might've been these guys and uh, our proof is that we don't have any proof, but it looks like something they might have done before. We think they did before. I mean, it's just like there's no evidence for anything. But out of you know that googly guck, you get a headline that says Chinese hackers responsible, you mm -hmm. know, or you know Iranian hackers responsible, and that's all people see and read, right? There's this whole there's this whole group of the big banks that's very secretive, and it's affiliated with WEFPAC. And they have been gaming this out since like 2021 or so. It's a FSISAC, the Financial Services Information Sharing and Analysis Center. Yeah, And, and they collaborated with uh, the European Central Bank, the Fed, the Carnegie Endowment that at the time was run by the current CIA director, William Burns, um, talking about exactly how this was going to play out, the cyber attack on the banks. In parallel to all this going on, the Bank of International Settlements has been running CBDC trials with partner central banks yep. around the world. So they're, maybe they're doing that in parallel. A cyber attacks happen and it's like, oh, thank totally. God we've been running this. But, but I think they're going to do it a couple different ways to try and uh, keep populations from rebelling against it in certain countries where there's a growing awareness about CBDCs. So I think it's pretty clear that direct issue CBDCs, like as the, the BIS has laid out, are going to or have already happened in basically BRICS countries. So Brazil, Russia, China, uh, it's all pretty much set up to play out that way, just as the BIS has uh, foretold. But I think in some of these countries where the population is more 
uh, wary of CBDCs or obvious centralized control of CBDCs. They're going to uh, try and keep the two tier system you know, as it exists like right now in the US and basically have the CBDC exist, but the public doesn't necessarily interact with it, which is, you know, essentially what FedNow is going to be, right? Um, it's about settlements like between banks and they'll use the CBDC and then they'll, uh, the public will interact instead with deposit tokens. And that'll be issued by uh, the commercial banks and that's what the public will interact with. And they're not called CBDCs, but they're programmable money and they're going to run on the rails of fed now and it's really not that different of a system but they can you know oh i have my jp morgan deposit tokens and i have my Citibank deposit tokens and i have my wells fargo deposit tokens and it's not a cbdc right if you look at the big banks in the us they're all in on deposit tokens and tokenized assets jp morgan all in and they're you know the banks that who are the banks that run the fed Right. So, I mean, the most powerful Fed bank is the, the one in New York. Right. And the main, you know, shareholders of that bank, it's Citi and JP Morgan. And the head of JP Morgan, of course, is Jamie Dimon. And the person who essentially created Citibank, Jamie Dimon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it's basically the same crowd uh, that decides what goes on there. And uh, I mean, if you've been looking at what Jamie, Amy Diamond has been saying uh, recently, you know, about stuff like we should seize private private property for the purpose of combating climate change. You want these banks to be able to issue you programmable money like it doesn't have to be a CBDC issued by the Fed to like have the same consequences. Whitney asserts that powerful government intelligence is being deployed and utilized by the biggest companies in the world. She says this is on a scale unlike anything we've seen. Whitney emphasizes the critical importance of cautious and ethical governance. She contends that the authority of AI should not be concentrated in centralized entities, but distributed, ensuring a future where technology empowers rather than controls. We are really in unprecedented times, and there's obviously going to be a lot of big shifts, and they're probably going to happen in the next one to two years. So that cyber attack we were talking about earlier, once that happens, uh, they're going to push for, and they've already mapped it out, the end of both online and financial anonymity. So if you're, you know, talking about CBDCs or any sort of CBDC equivalent system, you know, essentially, you know, KYC, right? <laughs> That's all going to be forced on everybody for everything. And anything that doesn't have that or affords any sort of financial privacy or anonymity will be made illegal under national security justifications. So we can expect a cyber Patriot Act to come after this event. Yeah, that's going to have that stuff in it because they've already mapped out the policy. And then, of course, the end of online anonymity means tying a government issued ID uh, to your internet access and having internet access, you know, require that at the ISP level. And that's what they've mapped out yeah. to do. It's extremely so, terrifying. The internet as you know it now will not exist after this happens, right? And you'll, th you know, what they'll say is, oh, you want to be allowed to be back online. You know, you have to get this ID, which of course is going to be some sort of digital ID equivalent. You know, since they're pushing for all of this with the CBDCs at the same time, right? But the goal is no anonymity period and to have everything you do surveilled and compiled and, uh, you know, have AI oversee it all and do all this predictive policing, uh, pre-crime stuff based on what you've already done and what you will do. So essentially the most important thing to do is not to participate in the system after that event just don't do it so i would say if you want some of the stuff that's like on the internet now in terms of like knowledge back that up offline download it put it on hard drives faraday bag it keep it you know safe because if you might want that stuff after all this happens and you don't want to have to you know get the cattle tag to be able to be online you know you definitely think ahead because if you want to believe what the WEF says about this timeline on this stuff, which is I would take them seriously, um, you know, you've got like a year, give or take a few months before the Internet gets, uh, you know, nuked 
Webb foresees a looming economic catastrophe driven by collapsing fiat money systems, rampant inflation, and bank failures. She suggests transitioning to a Bitcoin standard as the world grapples with the impending crisis. She asserts that the promises made by the Federal Reserve and central banks have been hollow, leading to excessive money printing and a proliferation of poor investments. And with the aftermath of the recent inflation surge, Webb says this will not lead to a return to the status quo. What do you think about her prediction for 2024? Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.